Hello, good morning. This is our second session. I'm uh, Paul Brindley from Music Ally. Can I, can I just actually invite the, uh, the jury members onto the stage, please? please? Please come and join us. So, in case you don't know, Music Ally, we've been uh, a selecting partner of Medem Lab since its inception, um, back 10 years ago. So it's the happy 10th anniversary for, for Medem Lab this year. Uh, when it was uh, grandly called the New Business Showcase back in 2008. And our first winner uh, was a company called Reactable. Uh, it was a musical instrument that was uh, pioneered by Björk. And, uh, and the following year, of course, was a very memorable year in particular when we had a, a little company from Germany that applied rather late. And uh, I am very pleased to say that I managed to persuade Medem to let them through and they won, and they were SoundCloud. Um, a little dude in a leather jacket with SoundCloud on his T-shirt saying he's going to be bigger than MySpace. And, uh, well, they, they did all right for themselves. And then, you know, the following year, we, we've had the like... Uh, well, that was... Uh, we had the Echo Nest in that year. We've had Songkick and uh, Kickstarter the year after that. So it's been, a, you know, it's been a really amazing contest in some terms of unearthing uh, the best and brightest of new music-related startups over the years. And uh, we, uh, we await to see who are the winners of this year. We're going to be seeing four, uh, four different categories. This one is music discovery and distribution. Uh, the judges will be deciding on each of those. And then there will be an announcement later on with the winners. And you will get to uh, decide upon an overall winner of winners as well. So ultimately, I, I suppose we sort of have five winners of Medem Lab this year. Um, so yeah, thanks very much to, to Medem for inviting me. Uh, thanks to our selecting partners, Blue Nove, uh, Mountain, and uh, North Zone, who have joined us this year. Uh, don't forget there will be the other two sessions, Marketing and Data Analytics uh, at 2 o'clock, and uh, Experiential Technologies at uh, 3 o'clock uh, in, this, in this room as well. Um, so before I go on to the sort of format of the session, let's just introduce the, uh, the judges. So first of all, um, joining us, uh, replacing Paul Javier... Costas, who hurt himself, uh, had a bit of an injury. Anthony Rival from SASM. Yeah, I'm Anthony Rival from SASM, and uh, I'm not uh, Xavier Costas. Um, I work with him, with him on uh, innovative and technological projects at SASM, like, for example, you write um, a platform co developed with IBM Teams, and also I work with him on the communication of innovative uh, project, the blockchain announcement, for example. Okay, thanks very much. And then we've got Danielle Kayembe. Yes. Hi, I'm Danielle Kayembe. I live in New York. Uh, I have a uh, startup that focuses on um, helping startups scale, launch, and raise money. We help them uh, identify the right investors and also identify partners in the tech space. Thank you, Danielle. TC Pan? I'm TC Pan. I'm the founder and CEO of Ultimate Music. Auto Music is the biggest um, B2B platform in China. We actually, uh, so, uh, we're also a startup, we're about, we're about 100 people now and um, three and a half years down this road. Currently we have about four to 500 million users on our platform, so um, we're a bit of a more scalable, um, successful startup for now. Thanks very much, and last but not least, John Rees from Warner. Hi, so I'm John Rees um, from Warner Music, one of the uh, three major record companies. Um, Based in London, I form part of our global business development and digital strategy team. So always looking for interesting new technologies and businesses to partner with. Um, so hopefully going to find some of those today. Great. OK, so that's, that's our judges. They'll be the ones that will be asking questions. And again, just to remind you of the format, uh, each presenter will get five minutes uh, to do their pitch. And then there'll be up to five minutes of questions from the, uh, from the jury members, okay? So, I think we're probably just about ready to go. So, I'm going to call on to stage our first uh, presenter from TrueLinked in Denmark, Suna Yerilt. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Good. Hi, I'm Suna Yerilt, founder and CEO of TrueLinked. Before, oh, I'm sorry, I have to, can I cut the time because we have to show the right uh, screen up there. Okay, can yeah. you pause? Yeah. We'll give you 
give you a few seconds. Actually. Yeah, thank you. Need to be sure that it's the right thing that we show. That's better. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Sunil Yael, founder and CEO of TrueLinked. Before, I was an international freelance opera singer. Did you know that 83.8% .8 of artists in classical music do not trust the agent's ability to provide jobs? Did you also know that the classical job market is a black box where artists have no way of knowing where the next job will come from and why they got it? I also found myself in this black box, leaving my fate in the hands of other people, not realizing that a strong personal network is the key to a good career. I also didn't realize that the artistic director live in the same black box, and between you and me, they don't exactly love agents either. But why do we all put up with this? Well, the answer is simple. There are too many artists for too few jobs. To be seen and heard, all my colleagues use social media and every possible channel, but do they get any jobs? Well, social media is confusing at best. It's unfocused and there's no professional validation and relevant data. Our solution is the first niche industry pro-show, not social network in music tech. We designed it to empower both the artist and the artistic director and bring them together in a new marketplace. TrueLink provides visibility, vetting, validation, and segmentation through a transparent, meritocratic, and data-driven community. Our mission is to create a transparent industry and give back power to the people who perform and produce classical music. Our goal is, in fact, to become the Google of performing arts. This also means that other verticals than classical music is in our scope. So let's take a look at what we offer. As an artistic director, I don't have to remember voice type roles or instruments to plan a new production. I don't have to contact 20 agencies to find relevant candidates. Contact the same to ask the artist for availability. Contact the same to arrange the audition and eventually contact 20 agencies to negotiate the contracts. I don't have to worry about the soprano getting ill. With Truling Solution for last minute jump-ins, we took the stress out of urgent artist replacements. As, not, as an artist, I don't have to worry about getting exposure and to build an expensive website no one ever sees. Our profiles are directly linked to the casting and planning tools of the artistic directors. I get transparency in the job market so I can choose my battles instead of shooting at everything. I can get in touch with colleagues and influential introducers in an international community. This means we are the only service that facilitates a digital casting process. Today, the industry is extremely low-tech. Our main competitors are offline agencies that are around a thousand of those, a few big ones, and a few good ones. Unlike our online competitors who sell a dream of being discovered, our only criteria for success is to get jobs. That's also how we make money. We charge the artist a fee of 6% compared to the market norm of 15 for every contract. The market of freelance contracts has been validated to be worth 22 billion euros annually. We built a gold mine with 3,800 vetted professionals and 130 arts organizations, all supported by a team of 17 with deep industry insights. We generated contracts of 1.4 million euros. With our current go-to-market strategy, we expect a rapid growth within the next 18 months. We have clients in all tiers. They say we are innovative, exciting, moving the industry towards the future with an intuitive, intuitive tool that brings clarity into the chaotic world of opera and classical music. Looking at the future, we see the new artist economy. We will provide arts organizations with an uh, engaged and faithful audience and artists with fans, sponsors, and crowdfunders. By aggregating data points from the audience community, we will be able to find new ways to hire artists, not only based on their artistic qualities, but also based on their ability to fill the hall. The new artist economy will expand the market and the interest in classical music. TrueLinked is the future of classical music, the future marketplace improving the lives of thousands of professionals living for our beautiful art form. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, so over to our jury members who'd like to ask the first question. John? Hi there. Um, I just, just initially just wondered how involved you are in the actual process of booking the artists in terms of travel, uh, developing their creative kind of live career. Yes, um, I can say that the community is actually the focus. The, the community and, and the connections between people. So we are, we are stepping back from the process and letting people take care of their career and making sure that they use in a, in a smart way their connections to get, uh, get forward in life. So uh, it's not the old fashioned agency model. Um, it's not working. 90% of people are unsatisfied. Okay, Danielle? So after someone has used your service, whether it's an artist or um, a, a company, uh, how often do they use it again? Do you have a sense of how often yeah. that happens? Absolutely. Um, for, for, for we, have, we have two measures. We, we call it one, one we call the 111 plan, that we want to have at least one contract per member per year, and that's an average, of course, so someone will have many and others will not have so many. Uh, and also we, are, we have, uh, we, have uh, we take good care that people, of course, there's a stickiness in using our tools. As we try to show, um, it's, it's very important that you use our casting tool as a, as a help in, in the everyday life of your casting experience and as a collaborative tool to speak to people across the road when you, for instance, use uh, advisors to, um, to the, for the casting process. You can speak to the, to the uh, conductor or the stage director or whoever who can sit in, in a totally different place and then can collaborate about the casting process. TC. Can I uh, understand a bit more about your plan um, going to the other markets? Because currently, I guess, you were well, an English-based uh, tool. Uh, do you have other plans for other markets and other languages? Yes, we do. Um, we have uh, set up uh, an office in Hong Kong, uh, and we definitely want to go uh, towards the Asian market because it's, uh, it's really a booming market when it comes to classical music. Uh, and, and of course, we, it will have to be in the language of, of, uh, of the countries that where, we, where we are. So right now, it's in English. It will definitely go, uh, we will definitely develop tools to also be in other, so it's a global, you can say, instead of a, a, lo a local and global a at the same time. I just have um, a general question because um, technology and innovation is not especially in the DNA of classical music. Do you think people are ready to use technology and to use innovative tools uh, like them? Like uh, Trulinked? I definitely believe so. We have been in the market for three years and, and the development is going faster and faster. We, we know that people are ready and, and uh, there's a need for it out there. Uh, the young people certainly don't want to be stuck and, and handcuffed by, by agencies. So I think the future is, is here and, um, and Truling is definitely part of that future. Thank you. Any more questions from the jury? You good? Um, maybe I could just uh, ask uh, another question because, yeah. I mean, you know, initially you might sort of think this is a little bit niche in terms of the market that you're addressing. And then you came up with a rather stunning figure there in terms of the annual value of the freelance contract market at 22 billion euros. Can you just explain how you arrive at, at that figure? Yeah, we, we, when we had, it's, it's in the due diligence uh, of some of our investors, they made some estimates and, and made some calculations. Uh, based on market size in different kinds of countries and where actually classical music is, is, a, is a, a big, you can say a big thing. The market where it's very small and market where it's really huge like the German market. And then comparing those to, to each other and also uh, based on, on the average salary of, of the artists, uh, we made surveys into that. So it's, it's, um, it's I, can, I can't say it's solid because there's no uh, Gartner report, uh, but it's as the best estimate that our investor could, investors could come up with. But that is the addressable market, That's the addressable for, your, market for your tool. That we yeah. can take 6% of that. Well, if you take 6%, percent you will be doing very nicely, I'm sure. Very nicely, yeah. yes, indeed. OK. Yeah. Um, no more questions? So, yeah, I think that, that's it. So thank you very much. Thank you Truly. very much. Thank, thank you. you.
Okay, so um, we have a fully international lineup as well, actually, uh, all presenters from different companies, uh, countries, which is all good. Uh, the next one is a little bit closer to home uh, from France, uh, and it's Digger's Factory, and I'd like to welcome on stage uh, Alexis Castile. Alexis, round of applause, please. Okay. Okay. Yeah, good to go. Got the presentation. Yeah. So, hello. I'm Alexis, CEO of Digger's Factory. Uh, first of all, thank you for choosing us to be part of this competition. Uh, today, we're going to talk about vinyl. I'm sure I'm not the first one that said that to you, but vinyl is back, and it's only the beginning. Why? Because in the music, people need to touch, people need to possess. Of course, streaming will keep the lead in the music industry, but streaming is practical and vinyl is sentimental. However, even with an exceptional growth in the, music, in the vinyl market, over 1,000% in the last 10 years, artists and labels have still some difficulties to, when it comes to producing vinyl. Where's the, I'm sorry, this is it? Okay, sorry. First of all, there is no tool to forecast the demand which provokes overproduction, stock, and loss of money. Secondly, there is, there is high cost in the vinyl production, and it's often difficult for an artist or label to, to produce a vinyl. Thirdly, the market is really fragmented. There is a lot of players, and it's often difficult for an artist to find the best partners. And finally, there is no really solution for, the dis for distribution for the small artists and labels because it's impossible to cover the production cost when you produce less than 300 records. That's why we created Digger's Factory. Digger's Factory is an on-demand platform for vinyl records that allows artists and labels to produce their vinyls without money and without any risk. It's really simple. You upload your music, your artwork, you choose the amount of records you want to produce, you, the price you want to sell it, which depends on the cost, and then you share your project to the community. People can listen to your music and pre-order your record. As soon as you have enough pre-orders, the production is launched, and Digger's Factory manages everything. We manage the production with one of our partners' uh, factories, the mastering with, uh, with uh, the studios, and also the shipping with our partner Juno. As soon as, uh, if you have en uh, not enough pre-orders, people are refunded, so there is no risk for everybody. And artists can also choose their own partners if they want. In short, our solution offers offer, uh, to artists to produce their records without money, without any risk, without any obligation of partners, and without st stock to manage. And you can uh, start the production with only 50 pre-orders. Digger's Factory isn't here to destroy the current distribution network. At the, on the contrary, we are willing to work with the current players. That's why we created professional accounts on the website for record, record shops and distributors, and they have access to wholesale prices directly on the platform. Now let's talk, let's talk about Digger's Factory today. So we have customers in 41 countries. We have artists in 15 countries. We have partners in five countries, and we work with three different currencies. We already, in one year, we already produced 30 projects. Let's take some examples. We did the reissue of the first album of Bob Sinclair. He wanted to produce 200 records, and we had 300 pre-orders. So we can go over the, the objective and produce more than expected. We also produced Encore Song, a Japanese artist from the label True Thoughts, and a young artist, Canadian artist, Capus Lab, who wanted to produce 50 records with a red vinyl, and we had 62 pre-orders. So thanks to the economy of scale, we have enough money to produce 100 records with this, with this money, and the artists have 38 records for free. We also launched a collaboration with the French archive INA to produce for the first time exclusive lives from artists like Red Charles, Serge Gainsbourg, and Dalida. The goal is to revive beautiful archives uh, thanks to the community. And we're planning to do a lot of various projects like this. We also did our first fundraising two weeks ago, 300,000 euros. Now, to people who think that we are just a new crowdfunding platform, you're wrong. We are more than that. 
We are a community of vinyl lovers that want to rethink the vinyl industry and optimize the distribution network to allow every release, old and new, to be produced on vinyl. Thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you. Okay, who would like to ask first question? John, yeah, you're reaching again. Um, thank you, I think it's, it's really interesting. I think physical generally, um, over the course of the next sort of five to 10 years, will probably move to an on-demand um, ordering process. Um, I just wondered about your strategy to get this out in front of music fans um, for reissues, because um, obviously scale and reaching the people is, is paramount. So I just wondered about your, your thoughts on that. Yeah, we have different strategy. First, for now, we contact every artist and labels we know because we, we have like a database, you, you know, Discog. So on Discog, you, you can know if, um, uh, if we need a repress for vinyl, if there is a demand. So we can check every artist who, who needs a, a vinyl to be repressed, for example, or every artist who didn't produce vinyl. There are a lot of re references that were never produced on vinyl. So this is our first strategy. And then we do a lot of partnership. For example, we did a partnership with Revem Nation in the US. So we, we offered uh, 100 records for free to one artist, and we, we had uh, 4,000 artists that registered on the website thanks to that. So we have a lot of strategy to, to really find new artists and labels on the website, and I think our solution is really interesting for them because they have nothing to lose. You're talking about a global database, by the way. Is that what you, you mean, like internationally? Yeah, it's international. Uh, as I said, we have artists in 15 countries already. Uh, half of our customers are, uh, are, other paid, are other countries than France. So, yeah, we already are international, and we ship worldwide. Do you see? Yeah, so, I mean, as John says, it's an interesting idea, but um, I'm just... I'm, I've been hearing a lot of these uh, kind of similar vinyl um, initiatives around the world, in, in China as well. So I'm just wondering, how do you um, kind of go against competition? I mean, I guess at the end of the day, the artist wouldn't have a lot of different platforms available for, for this kind of, um, you know, support. So how do you kind of scale quick enough to kind of become more scalable than pr to prevent another competition? Or are you welcome Bring uh, competition into the market, and uh, and then this all boom this market together. Yeah, actually, there's no uh, a lot of competitors in this market for now. Uh, of course, there are crowdfunding platform, and but uh, platform specialize in the vinyl uh, industry. There is Crate in the Jap in Japan, uh, and uh, a new one in England. But there is no a lot of competitors. So we already um, a well-known uh, platform for the for the vinyl uh, in this uh, kind of um, market. And I think Digos Factory is, was created as a social network. Uh, on Digos Factory, you can follow your, your friend, you can follow your artist, and you have notification when your friend, for example, uh, participates to a new project. So the, the goal is not to come for one project and never come back on Digos Factory, like a crowdfunding platform. On Digos Factory, you come every week to see what's the new release. Okay, I like A-pop. And every week, you will know the new, the new project in A-pop, you know? So, the goal is really to, 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 to tell people, come back every week and see what's the new project. Uh, so one of the questions I had, the last few years in the music industry, uh, classic or kind of older music has been outselling new music. So it seemed that a lot of the artists that you showed were more contemporary. So I was just kind of curious, kind of the mix of music and artists that you were dealing with. I don't really understand, you know, well, you're talking about because our projects are contemporary, right? And so you're, you're talking how we can find other, uh, older projects? That's your question? Um, so music from, let's say, 20, 30 years ago, right now, has been, for the last few years, has been outselling contemporary new artists. Yeah. So I was just curious, so a lot of times when people collect records, they'll want to buy the music from the 70s, so they'll want to buy, you know, Parliament funk or I don't know some like a hard to find kind of rare vinyl. So I was just curious the I think yeah people some people want to find rare vinyl, but uh, a lot of people want to see repressed a lot of young people are, are ready to buy vinyl today It's like 50% uh, of the clients have under 25 years old so there is a new generation of people who want to buy vinyl and we will find the the, the 
so, uh, people like um, older people who want to find rare vinyl thanks to uh, collaboration with INAR, for example, where we produce Red Charles album or, or Gainsbourg. So we, we are a platform for every kind of people who like vinyl. I think we can do a lot of stuff, a lot of partnership to, to, to offer a solution for everyone, and uh, young, young um, uh, vinyl lovers, but also old vinyl lovers. And can you talk uh, about the... Oh, I'm sorry, I think we're out, we're out of time. Sorry, um, that, that's it. The time is up. So we're going to have to say thank you very much thank to very uh, much. Alexis from Diggers, Fact Diggers Factory. Okay, so uh, we are now on to our third presentation uh, from Israel. And I'd like to welcome on stage uh, uh, Ariel Yalos uh, from Yoki Music. Ariel. Just let him set up his laptop. Make sure it doesn't fall off. It's slipping down. Yeah. Yeah, that's me. Yeah, we got the presentation. Yeah. Great. Okay. So, uh, hi everybody, my name is uh, Ariel Yaloz. I'm uh, from Yoki Music. Um, uh, Yoki Music creates uh, some of the world's best entertainment apps. We are in the mobile apps business. Uh, the company was founded uh, around uh, four years ago by uh, Gil Selka and myself. We are 18 people based uh, out of a small city near Tel Aviv in Israel. To date, we have more than 80 million organic downloads for our apps and we show 50% uh, year-over-year growth in revenues. We are in the mobile space, available for Android and iOS, and we are ranked either number one or number two to all the relevant keywords in our space. To date, we raised around $1 million, and uh, we have been profitable basically since inception. Uh, in our portfolio of apps, we currently have three apps. Uh, the first one, which was launched, is named uh, Yoki Karaoke. Uh, it allows uh, users to sing to their favorite songs from uh, an enormous catalog. They can uh, create rich video clips with uh, immersive effects. They can use our audio engine to create a studio quality recording. They can also share with their friends what they've just created and also browse uh, what the other members of the Yoki community has created. Uh, the second app which we have launched is named uh, Yoki Piano. It's a virtual uh, piano instrument which ranges, uh, addresses uh, from pianists who can create uh, original pieces to uh, guys who have never seen or touched a real piano, like five-year-olds who can play the app like a rhythm game to their favorite tunes from you know, chart busters to all-time classics. And uh, the third app which we've launched uh, is named uh, Yoki Guitar. Uh, it allows you to strum to your favorite songs with a choice of uh, acoustic, classic, or electric guitar. Uh, I'm going to show you a short uh, demo of uh, how the apps actually look like. Uh, it's super califragilisticexpialidocious, even though the sound of it is something quite atrocious. If you say it loud enough, you'll always sound precocious. Super So that was uh, Yoki Karaoke, short clip uh, for Yoki Piano. So some quick facts and uh, numbers. Two million users are joining our services every month. Around 600,000 songs are being played or sung every day. Uh, on the average, a user spends 15 minutes uh, on our apps, 
and Let It Go From Frozen was the most popular song with over uh, 10 million plays. Um, we are uh, strongly uh, believing in, uh, fr in, the fr in the freemium model, so, model sorry. so we think that singing and playing should uh, always be free to everybody. Uh, we limit some of the features and the songs for VIP users, and the business model is uh, based on recurring subscriptions. So certain songs from the catalog and certain features, like so saving your recording on the, on the cloud is restricted to, to VIP members. 85% of the revenues uh, of the company is from recurring subscriptions, 15% are from ads. Publishing deals and uh, copyright is a very important part of the business. Uh, you can see here on the board, I guess you know most of the uh, logos and names here, so we have a very wide net of uh, publishing deals uh, covering worldwide repertoire uh, with PROs and publishers. We aim to uh, sign more and more publishing deals for localized contents, which we see as a very good uh, growth opportunity for us. So that's us, that's Yoki in a nutshell, and uh, thanks everybody. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, who would like to go first? We're gonna go the same traditional order, John, yeah? yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for that, so um, just initially, so you, s you mentioned 80 million app downloads. I just wondered how many um, users are engaged on a kind of a weekly, monthly basis. So uh, we've been up for like uh, four years now. Uh, so it's, uh, there's churn, obviously. So it's less than 10 million a month. But uh, one of the KPIs that we constantly monitor is retention. I guess this is valid to all app makers. And we, we do manage to improve that uh, on a release by release basis. It's important to say that the 80 million downloads are all organic, so it's not like uh, we did aggressive marketing campaign or bought that user. So the, is the, it's many, I guess, viral features of the app that made it uh, so successful. Okay. And, and, fr and from the 10 million, what percentage are monetized, so the free to pay ratio? Right, so uh, although uh, around 85% of the revenues are uh, from subscriptions, uh, around 5% of the users generate that 85%. So I guess it's valid for many services like us. TC? Um, just wondering, what do you think will be your kind of exit for what you're doing now? Um, so it's uh, actually, it's a, it's a funny question. Uh, two weeks ago, we were acquired by uh, Stingray Digital. Uh, Stingray is a massive company in the music space based out of Canada, connected to around 400 million households. So. Uh, we strongly believe in that synergy. Congrats. Thanks. When they applied, of course, you were you know, a startup, and now you've since been Yes, bored, yeah, so yeah. We actually emailed me them, asking them, uh, can we still uh, be yeah. on the competition? They yeah. said, sure, why not? Exactly. Yeah. <coughs> Danielle. Yeah, so I was curious, kind of the mix of uh, revenue and users between the three apps that you showed. Um, so it's currently, I guess, 60% uh, is the karaoke app, 35% the piano app, uh, and 5% uh, is the guitar app, which was the most recent addition to our portfolio of apps. Piano is growing like crazy, so it's actually growing in a faster pace than Yoki, so I guess if we'll have this conversation in like six months, that's gonna be like 50-50 karaoke and piano. Second part of my question, so what was the um, deal size? Uh, I I can't mean, maybe we share the audience. No, no, I'm sorry, I can't disclose <laughs> right, that. Okay. It can be trusted, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. It's all, it's all um, we're happy, and here. the investors are happy. So most important, the investors are happy and we're happy. Right. Everyone's happy. Yeah. Okay. Oh, John, yeah. Um, so you mentioned three key properties at the moment. I just wondered um, the pipe, future pipeline, the emphasis on um, launching new versions of the existing properties ver versus R&D, developing new, new apps. Right, so we plan to launch additional apps. So uh, this, this very specific segment of uh, music entertainment apps, so on one hand, it's not streaming apps, right? It's, it's not like a passive experience, and it's not for, uh, for professional musicians. So people who like to engage with the music, to, to enjoy it. So I think that we've gained some expertise in the space, and we do plan to grow by adding additional apps to our portfolio. Still, we maintain those, uh, those apps that we currently have, and uh, all the R&D is actually focused on uh, the three apps that we have. We plan to recruit more people to support additional apps in that specific space. I can't disclose what are the specific plans. I don't want to give anybody any ideas, but uh, 
or we plan to add more apps to that specific niche of music entertainment. Okay, do you have any more questions? Anthony, no? No? Everyone happy? Yep. Okay, well, thanks very much. Thank you, guys. Thanks so much. Thank uh, Ariel Yalos from Yoki Music. Thank you. Thank you. So, we've now heard from our three uh, first presenters. That was True Link from Denmark, Diggers Factory from France, and we just heard from Yoki Music from Israel. Uh, and we're now going to uh, hear from uh, Atmosphere from the Netherlands and Rolf Drugger. I hope I got that right. Drudge. Yeah. Drudge. Oh, yeah. right, that was far too difficult. Rolf Drudge. Hi. Is, is there a clicker here? Oh, it is. It's probably the clicker. Okay. Yeah. You're probably familiar with the following experience. You enter a retail store or having dinner in a restaurant and the music they play is terrible. It's either too loud, the music doesn't fit, or the playlist hasn't been updated for years. We feel your pain and business owners do too. Hi, my name is Rolf and I'm co-founder of Collective M. And we provide personally selected in-store music. So one of the biggest challenges retailers and shop owners have is to create loyal customers. They all compete on customer experience and therefore spend a lot of time and money on the design and interior of their venues. But figuring out what sound fits that identity is very hard to get right. So we found three universal problems business owners have regarding the in-store music. So first of all, they either lack the time and knowledge to find the right music and keep it updated. And second of all, they have to deal with staff members who think they know which music fits best. And lastly, figuring out what licenses are needed to play music in a commercial setting doesn't make it any easier. So instead of providing generic one-size-fits-all playlists like many of the traditional background music providers do, we provide a tailor-made in-store music that is in tune with the client's brand. So similar to bre famous brands like Café Del Mar, music actually becomes part of their identity. We do this by connecting each brand to a personal curator with a similar music taste. And this curator will handpick the music every month. And the reason why we can do this on skill is that we don't work with in-house music directors. But we are building an open community of upcoming artists, DJs, and tastemakers all around the world. And we therefore not only solve a problem for brands, but also create an opportunity to earn money by curating music. Music is a critical part of the experience, but yet it's very hard to get right. So that's what we do. We've built a product from the ground up, supporting all major operating systems and working on both desktop and mobile devices. And next to that, we take care of all the legal stuff required for a business to, to play music in a, in a commercial setting. Our business model is pretty simple. We have a SaaS business model, so can clients pay for a monthly subscription per venue. And next to that, we have a, similar to the Airbnb model, our community of curators pick their own price and we take a 15% commission of their curator fee. So since we launched this business in January 2017, we've grown to 125 venues in nine different countries. And we're currently focused on fast growing, innovative brands within their space. So some of the clients you might know are eyewear fashion store Aizen Tate, uh, co-working space, uh, off, uh, spaces, which is acquired by Regis a couple of years ago, and food, Asian food restaurant chain Mogamama. So this market is huge since restaurants and shops are everywhere with over 5 million businesses in Europe and the US alone. The goal of this year is to grow to 1,000 venues and explore opportunities in cities like London and Berlin. And we do this by leveraging our community of curators to create a worldwide affiliate network all around the world. We are a diverse team with a passion for music that has been working together for over four years. In those four years, we've built a music discovery service and grown a community of over 30,000 active music lovers. 
companies like Spotify, Deezer, and Apple Music have pushed the boundaries in music for consumers. And now it's time to do the same for businesses. My name is Rolf, I'm from Collective M, and we want to connect the world through music. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, who would like to go first with a question? John, yes, you're leaning forward again. Um, thanks for that. Um, just two questions, really. I think um, it, you look like you've got some interesting, impressive scale already. I just wondered, you know, to hit that thousand kind of target is quite ambitious. Mm -hmm. um, I just wondered how you're managing to win new business today and um, challenges around that and how you can kind of ramp up to get yeah. that 1,000. Yeah, that's a, that's a good, good question. Um, the sales cycles are, exp are, are longer with, uh, with bigger deals. So um, most of our sales now at this moment is uh, uh, just uh, um, outreach by ourselves. Um, but we are, uh, as I mentioned, are implementing uh, programs for curators that, we have, uh, that are in our roster to also um, gain a revenue share basically from, uh, from clients that they bring in. So that ho hopefully helps to, ex to accelerate this sales uh, uh, to 1,000 venues. Does that answer um, your question? It does, thank you. Okay. And just one other question. Just um, once you've matched a music expert with a, with a brand, a retail location, what's the kind of the ongoing relationship, sort of feedback from the brand, tweaking yeah. the music, et cetera? Just how does it work once it's so, set up? At, at this stage, since it's pretty pretty uh, new, all, uh, all, all, uh, all the stuff, um, communication is through us, but we are building like a client-facing portal, which we call Backstage, and uh, communication between client and uh, the curator will go through there. So you get feedback from, let's say, people that work uh, behind the bar or uh, somewhere in the shop that can give feedback, and people in, within the, uh, the headquarters can basically also act on that or actually uh, communicate with with the curator uh, to to keep the music updated all the all the time. To yeah. TC. Yes, a, a bit more question on the curator side because I guess um, if it's a big brand and it's an international chain, for example, a hotel chain, mm -hmm. then the curator can personally go there and experience the environment and curate the music that suits the location. But if it's a small kind of local place. How do you actually ensure that your curators can actually provide something that really suits that actual location? Because sometimes someone could be in Berlin, but your request, request is coming from London. Yeah. So how do you kind of do that? Yeah, we, we first of all start with the, pr the process with, a, with a sort of a music identity creation of the brand. And we only match a curator to a brand which has a similar music, um, similar music taste. So we only provide this match based on their, on their taste. So that makes, that makes sure that uh, they don't really uh, have to think of, uh, of the, the business itself that they have to curate for, because it's already music that they, that they search for or dig the whole day. So they're really experts in the, in the field. So that means actually that you don't actually have to be present in the, in the location itself. So you're saying is uh, it's more of the owner's own taste matching with the curator rather than how the people who are actually in the location feels about what the music should be in that actual location that they are at. Um, so the beginning, before we start with the client, we actually make this, this identity. And that's, that is the DNA, the, the sound of that brand. So it's not, it's not necessarily the, the sound of the the owner of the store, but it's actually the brand. It's similar to a brand identity uh, in, in the designer world. This is a, a music identity creation that we, that we do, first of all, yeah. Danielle. Yeah, so um, I was curious, how do you determine what your prices are and who's your competition? Um, prices, we have a, a, a fixed, fixed fee, 30 euros uh, per venue per month, and curators pick their own price. So it's basically, as I mentioned, like an Airbnb model. Uh, they can set their own price based on either expertise or maybe a more famous artist that uh, that thinks that he is a has a has a better expertise than someone else. And comp about competition, competition. yeah, there's 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 a lot of uh, uh, tra more traditional companies like um, uh, Mood Media, for example, like the the market leader, um, but also newer uh, uh, newer uh, businesses entering this space, um, a, a spin-off from Spotify. Um, 
Uh, it's called the Cyber Tracker brand, uh, but also smaller ones in London, for example. So we are aware that that uh, this this market is is quick, kind of quick question here. Sorry, just because we haven't got much time. Yeah, um, I just had a, a question because here we are all convinced of the impact of music on revenues for restaurants, for stores, bars. Um, and I wanted to know, I wanted to know, um, did you study the impact of the use of your service before and after? Not, not just yet, to so it's too, that's, that's too short uh, for us uh, and with a and with limited amount of people that we, uh, that we have currently have, but that's something okay. that could be interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So definitely. So we'll have to leave it there, we're out, we're out of time. Thank Thanks. you very much, Thanks. that's our fourth presentation, Atmosphere. Right, so it's now uh, time for our fifth and final presentation in this category. Uh, so I'd like to welcome on stage, we really are going to the other side of the world, literally, um, Carl Richter from um, Australia with Disco. Carl. Hi there. Hi there. Uh, my name's Carl Richter, yep. I'm founder at uh, Disco. Disco is a, um, way, a new way of uh, managing and sharing music files and also workflow. Uh, I'm a music supervisor in Australia and have been for the last 15 years. Uh, a few years back, our team um, started ch burning up a lot of time uploading and downloading music files. There was sort of a, a sea of Box and Dropbox and we transfer links. Uh, once we got the music into the team, we were also then uh, losing a lot of time dealing with an enterprise problem of collaborating and managing metadata and trying to do that using a consumer-facing product uh, like iTunes. So it occurred to us that perhaps we should bring those two jobs to be done together on the one platform. And we started building Disco. Sort of fast forward a couple of years, and I guess as a highly networked um, gatekeeper in the music industry in Australia, we reached out to record labels, publishers, managers, artists, and we found that they had a similar problem and were also dealing with it in a similar way, namely using storage like Box or Dropbox and something like iTunes as a hack to try and solve this problem. And it occurred to us that um, it was kind of odd that there wasn't one industry standard to address the job that all of us pretty much were doing, that is managing and transferring music files. It also occurred to us that our workflow platform could also be used across all of the different tribes in the music industry. Uh, so we've been in beta with Disco now for just a bit over a year. And I'll uh, just show you a quick film on um, what it looks like on the inside and where we've got to. Okay. Oops. Let me go back. All right. So um, this, is, uh, this is what Disco looks like. It's a, a left to right of screen workflow platform. Um, uh, and uh, basically, you've got your catalog on the left hand side, and you've got your, uh, files, uh, your files that you send out on the right hand side. Uh, the, it should be working now as a film. I'm not sure why it's no, it's you rolling. Mark, is there a reason why that's not playing? Basically, um, it's a drag and drop, and you can take your music files onto the right hand side, and uh, you can then uh, also search. It's got a powerful. Um, uh, uh, it's got a powerful way of sort of going through all of the metadata. It's also got what's called like a, a breadcrumb trail, and that allows you to dig really deep into the catalogue and to very quickly find um, your music files. Once you've actually saved it, it instantly puts it back in as a system of record into the um, into Disco, so that becomes a way in which you can collaborate and very quickly uh, share um, knowledge across the team. The music is then. Uh, uh, shared, you don't have to be a disco user to use it at the other end. Um, and uh, there's also some really nice analytics and ability to see who has actually accessed that material. It can be used for all sorts of um, people within the music industry, so PR and, and uh, labels and the like. Uh, the, after a year, where we've got to with disco is, is that we've got over 200 companies that are utilising it worldwide. Um, it's, uh, it's spread pretty much internationally, uh, record labels, publishers, managers. Um, and uh, here's some of the metrics that we've got. After 12 months, and this is just with sort of iteration and product development, we've got 3 million copyrights that are on the platform. Uh, there's over 200,000 plays a month. 
there's also what I guess is sort of a really great stat is that 50% of our monthly active users log in daily. So this is a tool that's very sticky and um, there's a lot of love for it. Uh, we've got a, it's a SaaS product, so it's a combination of seats and also a number of um, titles. Uh, we're, we're fanatical about our NPS, that's up around 80%. And I guess for us, product market fit is really about people loving the product and um, uh, really would be quite unhappy if um, they couldn't actually use it anymore. And uh, that's essentially what we're seeing with the feedback and um, with the pickup. We've, we've started with SMB, so that's a world that we know, so it's smaller businesses, but at the same time, the types of users that are using um, Disco are individual artists and uh, also right through to multinationals as well. I guess in our mind, what we're thinking of doing is, is um, really sort of re redoing the pipes for the music industry and looking at creating a, um, an enterprise uh, platform that can be um, used by everyone. Let's just go. Yep, okay, Great. thank you very much. <laughs> okay, who would like to go? Do you want to, one more time, John? <laughs> um, thank you for that. Um, I just wondered, just initially, out of the, the people using it currently, what are the kind of the key pieces of functionality that they, they rave about and they find mm. most attractive? Well, I'm, I'm incredibly disappointed that the film didn't play because it's actually an intuitive, engaging, delightful platform. And it's really, it's built for creatives, but it's got a massive search engine underneath it. So the thing that it does do is something that might take over an hour now, just literally can take minutes. Okay, and in terms of the addressable market, so you, yep. you managed to get quite a few clients already signed up and yeah. using it. Yeah, so we've got how, over How two. big is that market in total? You say? Uh, it's a good question. I think you know we're looking at a bunch of different verticals, so it's definitely in the tens of thousands if you look across from record labels or rights holders through to individual studios and artists. Um, and I guess we're sort of working first of all with the gatekeepers, with the people that like to receive music um, through disco, and then working back through the rights and then also back into um, artists. Okay. Danielle. Sure. Can you talk a little bit about your um, security and privacy? Yep, sure. So uh, we've had to do a lot of pressure testing to pick up a couple of our multinationals. And um, uh, all of the, the links that are, are sent out uh, are completely non-traceable. Um, and we've, we've met with um, the standards that are required. It's on AWS worldwide. Uh, and there's you know, a bunch of security protocols around that as well. Anthony? No? Yeah, we good there? Um, can I just ask the situation with regards to funding and where you are and yep. how you've funded the company in yep. the first place? Sure, so it's completely bootstrapped. Uh, and um, yeah, that's where, that's where we're at at the moment. So you, fund, you funded it yourself? Is yep. it just, just you? Yeah, correct. So I, I've had a, a music supervision company for the last 15 years. We've got four different offices. Um, we've got a team of eight that are working on this, and uh, uh, I guess we're now at the next 12 months, it's really about growth, and we've had like a sort of 15% 15, 15 month on month increase, uh, and the aim is really to look at getting to about around 1,000 companies um, uh, by this time next year. Do you do all, all the business developments as well? You do that yourself? Uh, correct. Wow, okay. Probably one one show. I was just trying to check whether, whether we can't get the video, no? No? I'm just asking, just in case we can get the video played. No, his, his video didn't work. Can we get it to play? Bear with us, just in case. We don't have it. No, oh. Mark has got it on the. Oh. Mark, Mark should have it up there. No, we can't show it. Okay, bear with us. We're looking for it. <laughs> See if we can find it. Since you've got a little bit of time as well, mm. just in case. Okay. Yeah? yeah. Let, while they're uh, looking for that, I will uh, just tell you, by the way, about this session. Oh, we've got, we've, we've got it. It's on screen. Let's hope it works. Give it a go. Okay. Okay? Is that off and racing? So 
what, what we were doing here was just building a playlist. It's one of the um, basic functions that you can do within Disco. As you can see, it's a really nice sort of drag and drop, really quick play, uh, very intuitive. And um, that's, uh, yeah, you can do searching. This is the breadcrumb trail that I was talking about, where you can deeply dive back in through a catalogue. And that's a, a really nice way of um, being able to access the, the, um, the value in the catalogue as well. It supports not just music files, but film files too. And uh, another nice feature of it is the inbox. Inbox basically means that you don't have to upload or download again. Um, you can see here that a couple of songs have been chosen and dragged over onto the right hand side. And uh, that's where you build the list. Uh, it's, uh, you, you scroll over and the metadata pops up as well, so you don't have to dig and have a look for that. You can add internal and external comments to the, um, uh, anything that you're sending out. This is the point at which then as you save that list, it becomes uh, part of the system of record and gets added instantly back into uh, Disco. You can apply themes and, and the like to it. It's a one-click URL for sharing with others and um, this is what the receiver sees. They're, they don't have to be a Disco user and of course it can be accessed across all platforms. Here's another use case for it as well for like PR departments because um, you, know, you can house all of the one asset on the, on the um, all the different assets on the one link. Uh, and then there's just a nice little pop-up that shows the sort of analytics and reporting that, is, uh, that sits behind each of those. Yep. That's it. That's about it. Excellent. Yeah. All right, well, we got, we got <laughs> there in the end. Thank you very much. Yeah. Sure. Thank you to Carl uh, from Disco. So that is it for our five presentations. I'll just remind you again, uh, the companies you've heard from. We heard first from uh, TrueLinked. In, in Denmark, um, agency focused particularly on uh, the classical music sector and uh, casting requirements. Uh, the on-demand vinyl solution from France, Diggers Factory, music apps uh, from Israel, from Yoki Music, uh, in-store music provision from uh, Atmosphere in the Netherlands, and uh, we just heard from Disco Australia. So the judges and I are going to go off and deliberate. We're gonna choose uh, a winner and then try and stay quiet about it for a few hours. Um, be, do please come along here at two o'clock. Uh, there will be the marketing and data and analytics session. And then at three o'clock, we will have the experiential technologies uh, session. And then uh, at 4.45 in here is when we are going to announce all of the four winners. Okay, so, well, thanks very much for, for attending. I hope you enjoyed that and hope to see you again in a little while. Thank you.